In 2003, I fell in love. The relationship had a lot of false starts and to be honest, it often crashed, but we had something special. Whenever I had a crazy idea, we would work on it together. And whenever I had some kind of thing to say, I felt like within that relationship, I had the freedom to say it. It was the first time I had a partner in crime that was with me in all of my endeavors. This little inanimate object and I were inseparable. <laughs> The Mac Mini wasn't the first piece of hardware I owned. As a teenager, I had an Ericsson pager, a Nokia mobile phone, and obviously a Sega Master System. But there was something about the Mac Mini that made me feel empowered. It was the first time I felt like a piece of technology had empowered me. Empowerment is often defined as having a sense of self-expression, of having autonomy and the freedom to make decisions for yourself. The starting point of empowerment in this story was about being recognized and heard. The first independent project I made on that Mac Mini was a magazine about women in hip hop because this was a group that I felt had no voice. I was obsessed with hip hop. Every Friday I would go with my girl crew, go and get my nails done, go to the club and be all excited. But when we got there, we'd be like a handful of girls in a room of 200 boys. They either expected us to be the DJ's girlfriend or someone's sister, and when they found out that we weren't either, they would ask us out, hit on us, and it was highly annoying. It was so frustrating to not just be able to go out and enjoy the music, and I desperately wanted to talk about that frustration. So I booted up my Mac Mini and started making WAH magazine. WAH stood for We Ain't Hoes. <laughs> When I was 21 years old, I spent two months running around after uni lectures interviewing women in hip hop. I would interview female DJs, female graffiti writers, female break dancers, and female rappers. By making this magazine, I gave them a platform for expression and recognition. This little Mac Mini had given me a voice. But this wasn't a singular endeavor. I built a community for other women. This little piece of hardware had not only enabled my voice, but it enabled all the other women who felt the same. For me, it was a beginning of a journey of using technology to empower women. Two other bits of software had made this little empowerment party possible. Photoshop and InDesign. To make the magazine, I sat down and I taught myself how to use these programs literally by using the help function. To this day, they've been the most useful skills I've acquired in executing all my feminist projects. When we decided to turn WAH into a blog in 2006, I could design my own cover headers. When I wanted to host a club night with female DJs playing hip hop, I could design my own flyer. I never had to wait for a boy to do anything. I didn't have the frustrations of communicating the exact shade of jelly pink that I wanted for the background color of the flyer to a typically male graphic designer. I even part designed our first book. This featured all of our favorite women from all the work that we were doing, and it sold 70,000 copies worldwide. The fact that I'd even contributed to that design was a revelation to me. In 2009, this community of women had grown online so I opened a nail salon to create a physical space for all of the endeavors that we were doing online. It would act as a real life center for our projects. I started WAH Nails with a laptop and a vision. I'd use InDesign to make the shop sign, the window vinyls, the nail menus. I would just sit at my computer every single night and make stuff for that shop. Adobe InDesign had given me autonomy, the autonomy to create and the freedom to run what was now an actual business. So now we've moved from hardware to software, but actually the biggest explosion for the wild business was social media. I discovered Tumblr and used it to create and build our website. I tweaked the HTML, again, just by Googling it, uh, to customize our own theme. The reach of our business, our community, and our female empowerment agenda was now limitless. For every 500 women who actually came into the nail salon, there'd be another 500,000 online who are seeing our nails. Now we're involved in a network. The power of the online network was completely fascinating to me. 
I'd utilised a single user software system with Adobe. We'd harnessed a feed-based blogging platform with Blogspot. But now here was Tumblr and Instagram, which had given me all the power of the publishing tools I had before, but in a networked environment. As technology became part of the daily running of my business, I became quite obsessed with how it was built and who was building it. But this is where my love affair with technology stalled. I'd used publishing and social media as an empowerment tool to create and connect, but now I needed an empowerment tool to earn. I was a young businesswoman by now and a mother. And like most small businesses, I was living fairly hand to mouth. Technology had given me a voice. I gained recognition. It had given me the ability to create. So I found self-expression. Tech gave me autonomy. I was making decisions for myself on my own terms. It had definitely been instrumental in building my brand and my business, but something in this relationship was missing. <laughs> Money. I was looking for economic empowerment. I was looking for equality in earnings. I myself had grown up to a single mother, the eldest of four children, so I knew firsthand what the effect of financial insecurity can have on a family and on a woman. It's why we stay in abusive relationships. It's why we do that job that doesn't necessarily make us feel good. It's another form of control and it's another way of removing that autonomy. And it wasn't just my story that made me feel this way. At WA, we'd inspired countless young girls to start beauty businesses and I was part of a new generation of beauty salon owners. We'd worked with over 100 young women directly, many of whom were single mothers, they had escaped abusive relationships, they'd never even painted nails before, before finding expression in this skill, but they worked from home before finding comfort in a salon. A lot of them had anxiety and depression, and because of the low wages, many of these nail techs were living on benefits. We'd also worked with a charity called Art Against Knives, which had set two nail bars in social housing estates and taught over 500 girls nail, nail skills and kept them off the streets. This new generation of beauty professionals had worked hard in building their public profile to gain clients. Like me, they'd used the publishing tools and social media to get their names seen and heard, but they were all saying the same thing. Likes and reblogs don't put food on the table. For these girls, self-expression did not automatically lead to economic empowerment. Why were we being left out? I thought and thought about how we could grow our WA business financially, how I could increase my earnings to move towards that hallowed economic empowerment that I'd set for myself. Naturally, I thought we should get a salon software system. It would increase my efficiency, help with marketing, and allow me to track my revenue. But when I Googled what was on the market, this is what they look like. After years of using the most innovative bits of technology to build my cool business, I didn't want to work with something that looked like it was built in 1998. They had neither the publishing tools nor the network. Beauty professionals were artists and creatives, and salons were the original social network. So why were we being left out? Perhaps it's because beauty services are typically seen as women's work. It's not stable work, it's not secure work. And in fact, 98% of the beauty services market are self-employed. What that means is they have no benefits, no pensions. These young, talented, engaged women are in a state of financial instability every day. But the beauty service industry is worth 100 billion globally. So I ask again, why was technology leaving us out? Why was it at the ground level of beauty where all of these women were doing the work, were we still financially insecure? So I decided to get to work. I was like, I'm gonna build my own system, I thought. By now it's 2015 and my love affair with tech had been rekindled by the emerging startup ecosystem that we have here in London. The concept of building my own salon system hadn't even occurred to me when I had my little Mac Mini all those years ago. But now, now anything's possible. I began working on my dream salon software system for Warnells. We had a global audience and we had quite a complicated booking system, so it definitely was not going to be easy. But I'm a woman who gets her nails done 
and has run a salon and I've worked with other women. So surely I knew what I was doing. And for the bits I didn't know, namely coding, I could hire for. And then it hit me. Just like I'd done with War Magazine, this project wasn't just for me. It was for a whole future generation of women who wanted to close the gap between publishing their work on social media and actually selling their services and earning money. I had an opportunity to build technology for other women, so that became my North Star. I soon realised it wasn't just my revelation. The Sustainable Development Goals are a collection of 17 global goals set by the UN in 2015. They act as a framework for world peace and prosperity by the year 2030. Goal number five sets out to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls, but it's target 5B that interests me in particular. Promote empowerment of women through technology. So last year we became an official participant of that goal. And that's why I built Beauty Stack. Taking everything I'd learned from 15 years of being a girl on the internet to have self-expression, to connect with women and to gain autonomy, mixed with the future of helping women transact online. Economic empowerment. Beauty Stack allows women to build their beauty portfolios, connect their calendar, but most importantly, connect their bank accounts. You can buy those hairstyle or those nails from the girl who actually created it. The UN didn't specifically say economic empowerment in Target 5B, but for me personally, I feel it's where we've made the most difference. After being live for just one month, we're already seeing the effects. Callie is a nail tech who's living on the London living wage. On Beauty Stack, she earns two weeks of her salon wage in a single day. She's 23 and lives with her parents and four siblings. With her earnings on Beauty Stack, she can soon get her own place and her own independence. Emily was in a salon business over here uh, with a quite abusive husband. When they got divorced, she set up as a makeup artist on Beauty Stack and for the first time in years, she had her own income going into her own bank account. She actually said here, which was quite emotional for me, I don't feel like a Stepford wife anymore. I didn't study computer science or engineering and I'd never built technology before. I just consumed. But now it's time to create, to build what we consume and not just build it for ourselves as individuals, but to lift other women so that we can all rise together. How do we help women not just post, but get paid? In the same way, I had specialist knowledge from actually running a salon, which gave me the impetus to build a salon system. By virtue of sitting here and being a woman, you have specialist knowledge that can contribute to the building of technology for other women. Women are 50% of our population, but we represent less than 10% of the starting found up teams. We are 50% of the population and we receive 4% of the venture capital. And if we want to go back to economic empowerment, because we only make up 10% of those founding teams, we actually own around 9% of the equity in startups right now. The other 91% of equity in tech companies belongs to men. So the real disruption here is not just innovation in technology, but disruption in the process of who is creating that technology. I urge you all to think about how you can participate in the building of technology, how you can turn from a user into a creator, and how can you move from being a creator into a builder? And as a builder, how can you empower, and I mean economically empower women with the technology that you build? We are in the best time for women to build technology. There is access, there are tools, and there is capital, and I am living proof of this. My relationship with technology has gone through many, many different love affairs. But I think by building technology that economically empowers young women, I found myself in an equal rights marriage. So let's put some food on the table for those girls.